For centuries, humanity has been fixated on the idea of eternal life, exploring every possible avenue, both scientific and spiritual, in the quest for immortality. We've long been haunted by the impermanence of our existence, seeking ways to transcend it. With each generation, new breakthroughs emerge, some raising hopes and others leaving us with more questions than answers. One such modern twist in this age-old quest comes from the world of quantum physics, a field of science that deals with the mind-bending complexities of the universe's smallest building blocks. A growing number of theories suggest that death, as we know it, may not be the ultimate end. At the heart of this conversation is the question, what if we never really die? While this may sound like something out of science fiction, ideas rooted in quantum mechanics and biocentrism are now forcing us to rethink the nature of life and death. Let's take a closer look at how these theories challenge our conventional understanding and more intriguingly, offer a glimpse of what life after death could look like. Traditional scientific thinking tells us that life arose because of the conditions provided by the universe. The stars aligned, literally, in such a way that Earth became hospitable for life to flourish. But biocentrism, a theory put forward by American scientist Robert Lanza, offers a radical reimagining of this relationship. Rather than the universe creating life, Lanza proposes that life creates the universe. It's a mind-boggling concept. Biocentrism argues that consciousness is not a mere byproduct of brain activity, but instead the very force that brings the universe into being. According to this theory, consciousness existed from the very beginning, long before life evolved as we understand, and our perception of the universe is shaped by the limitations of our human minds and bodies. In this view, our brains and bodies are akin to complex modems, receiving and translating the signals of consciousness into what we call reality. When the brain dies, or the modem is destroyed, the signal doesn't vanish. It continues to exist, potentially being rerouted into new forms. In this model, life becomes a universal signal, one that transcends individual physical forms and bodies. In other words, when our physical selves are no more, that doesn't necessarily spell the end of the life signal. This could mean that consciousness, the root of all life, carries on in some form, even after what we traditionally perceive as death. Now, this is where quantum mechanics comes into play. The world of the quantum is notoriously difficult to grasp, filled with phenomena that defy the logic of everyday life. For instance, the double slit experiment, a cornerstone in quantum theory, demonstrates that light and matter can behave as either waves or particles, depending on whether they are observed. In short, the mere act of observation appears to alter reality itself. Lanza argues that this reinforces the biocentric view, suggesting that consciousness shapes the universe, rather than being a byproduct of it. Another quantum concept that brings this closer to the idea of eternal life is the multiverse theory. Introduced by physicist Hugh Everett in the mid-20th century, the multiverse hypothesis posits that there are infinite parallel realities existing alongside our own. Every time a choice is made or an event occurs, the universe splits into multiple versions, each one representing a different outcome. This leads to the mind-blowing possibility that there might be versions of us living out different fates in countless other realities. In the context of death, the theory of quantum immortality suggests that there could always be a version of the universe where we survive, no matter how dire the circumstances. Think of it as reality constantly branching off into different paths, some of which lead to death, while others lead to survival. If there are infinite possibilities, then perhaps in one version of the multiverse, you avoid the fatal accident, or the deadly disease is cured, or you simply wake up the next morning alive when you shouldn't have. Quantum immortality, as the theory is called, doesn't necessarily imply you're conscious of every survival. You wouldn't live through every possible version of yourself. Instead, it suggests that some version of you will continue to exist, perhaps in a reality that has diverged from the one where you ceased to be. Many scientists and philosophers have raised questions about why the universe seems so perfectly calibrated to support life. Known as the fine-tuning problem, 
This refers to the astonishingly precise conditions, such as the strength of gravity or the charge of electrons, that make life possible. If any one of these variables had been slightly different, life as we know it could never have emerged. For some, this fine-tuning problem provides evidence of a designer or a higher intelligence behind the universe. For others, it's merely a cosmic coincidence. But proponents of biocentrism see it as further proof that consciousness is the driving force behind existence. If life creates the universe, then it would naturally fine-tune the cosmos in a way that allows for life to continue. This leads to a provocative conclusion. Life, as a form of consciousness, has a vested interest in perpetuating itself. It would craft the universe, down to the finest details, in such a way that life not only emerges, but thrives. And if consciousness is the creator, then death too may be nothing more than a temporary pause in the signal, a shift rather than an end. Of course, not everyone is on board with these theories. Biocentrism and quantum immortality have both faced significant criticism, largely because they remain highly speculative. While these ideas are intriguing, they still lack empirical evidence that can be tested or measured. For instance, the nature of consciousness itself remains a profound mystery, and biocentrism doesn't fully explain how consciousness could exist independently of the brain. Many scientists argue that while quantum physics is a fascinating field, it may not provide the answers to the ultimate questions of life and death. After all, quantum mechanics deals with the subatomic world, which is vastly different from the macroscopic world in which we live and die. Applying quantum principles to human consciousness, they argue, might be a bridge too far. Still, despite the criticisms, these ideas have captured the imagination of many. There's something inherently appealing about the notion that life continues after death, even if it's in a form we can't yet comprehend. Whether it's in another universe or through the recycling of consciousness into new bodies or beings, the idea that death isn't the final curtain has a powerful allure. At this point, you might be wondering, even if these theories were true, what does it really mean for us? If death is an illusion and life carries on in some form or another, would that change the way we live? Or is it all just an intellectual exercise? On one hand, the idea of quantum immortality could be liberating. If life never truly ends, then why not live boldly without fear of the unknown? What could we accomplish if we weren't so concerned about the end of the road? On the other hand, immortality presents its own challenges. What's the point of living, some might ask, if there's no finality? If life stretches on infinitely, does it lose some of its meaning? In some of our previous discussions on the topic, we have explored the moral dilemmas of immortality, focusing on whether a life without death would still have a purpose. In an infinite existence, every experience would eventually be repeated, every achievement nullified by the endless possibilities of time. Life, in this sense, might become a kind of cosmic monotony, with no real stakes or significance. But perhaps the real takeaway from these theories isn't about finding definitive answers to life and death, but about shifting our perspective. Instead of being paralyzed by the fear of death or obsessed with the idea of living forever, perhaps we should focus more on the present, on the life we're living right now. Quantum mechanics and biocentrism may offer tantalizing glimpses of a life beyond death, but they also remind us of the incredible mystery that life itself is. Ultimately, no matter how compelling these theories are, we still live in a world where our lives are defined by relationships, emotions, and experiences. We feel joy and sorrow, hope and despair, and those feelings are what make life rich and meaningful. The mystery of whether consciousness survives beyond death may be one we never fully unravel. Until then, it's worth remembering that life's value isn't determined by how long it lasts, but by how deeply we live it. We may ponder our place in the multiverse, wonder about the nature of consciousness and speculate about life after death, but in the end we still have a life to lead, roles to fulfill, and moments to cherish. So even as we contemplate the possibility that our consciousness created the universe, let's not forget to live fully in the one we can see, feel, and touch. And that, in its own way, is pretty special.